Hi, you beginner students. Master C here. I'm excited for another great class with you guys today. Uh, we've been doing a lot of review stuff, which is great. We've gone through red stripe, we've gone through blue stripe. Today we are tackling the mighty yellow stripe, okay? So it should be pretty fun together. Now, let's see here. We have a little cow joke, okay? So I want to know, where is a cow's favorite place to go on like a rainy day? How are they going to spend their day? What do they like to do? I'll tell you at the end of class. Right. Now, let's go ahead and bow it in, and we'll make the magic happen. So face right up here. Chida! Kunye. Face the flags. Kuki, all right? Paro. Standing meditation. Makia. Paro. Face the grandmasters. Kwan Chan Yim. Chida! Kunye. Face the way one more time. Chida! yet. All right, now for our warm-up, we're going to start off with a little bit of a front stance exercise mixed in with some jumping jacks. So I'm going to take a few steps back and I'll kind of demonstrate how this first round is going to work. I'm going to put my hands on my hips and I'm, my job is to walk forward in front stance. So I want to make sure that my front knee is bent, my back leg straight, my toes are pointed forward, and my belly button and belt knot are also forward. So when I step, my back leg is going to come in and out. Front knee bent, back leg straight, good stance. Two, three, four. If you need to scoot back a little bit, good. My goal is to get to six, five, and six. Once I've done six steps in our front stance, I'm gonna do 10 awesome clapping, slapping, jumping jacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boom. That's the first round of our warm-up, guys. So six steps in front stance. Make sure each of them are great. Ten jumping jacks. And I want you to do that three times. Okay? So you can pause the video on the still frame, work that out for just a minute or two, and I'll see you right back here. Awesome work with, with round one, guys. Moving on to round two. This time, we're gonna be moving forward in back stance, and we're gonna throw in some awesome push-ups here. So for this one, I'm gonna turn sideways, so you can see. I'm starting in my back stance here. I want 90 degrees between my feet. So that means my back leg pointing off to the side, my front foot, toes pointed straight ahead. When I come forward, I'm gonna drop my lead heel, I'm gonna pick my knee up, set down, and then I'm gonna fix my back foot. Good, that was one. Drop the heel, pick it up, set it down, fix it. Two, three, I'll shuffle back so I kinda of stay in the frame of the camera here. Notice how my front foot, the heel is off the ground. I have two more, drop the heel, Pick it up, set it down, fix it. Last one. Very good, very good. So six steps forward in back stance, and then we're doing, let's just five good push-ups I think would be great. So when we do our push-ups, hands, toes down on the mat, we're gonna lower our body so our chin and tummy touch at the same time, all the way down. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. So six steps forward in back stance, five great push-ups. I want to see you do three rounds of that, and I'll see you right back here for round three. Great work again. Final round for our warm-up. We're gonna practice stepping back into horse stance and moving in a good horse stance. We're gonna mix in some spear sit-ups, right? So I'm gonna start in Chun B, and I'm gonna step back into horse stance on both sides. I'll choose, say, my left leg to go back first. So I step back. Notice I want my feet even. That means I don't have one in front or behind the other. My toes are pointed forward, not off to the sides, right? Pointed straight ahead. Knees are bent. Good horse stance. From here, 
I'm gonna take my back leg, I'm gonna step up and step out. Then I would return. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Step back into a horse stance, make sure my feet are even, toes are forward, then I'm gonna step up, step out. That was once on each side. I need to do it two more times on each side. So from here, Good, and one more time on each side. Stepping back, step up, step out. Stepping back, step up, step out. Good, now that I've done that on both sides, I'm gonna try 10 solid sit-ups, guys. Now, on our back, glue your feet to the floor. Knees are bent. One hand on top of the other for the spear. I'm gonna swing the spear back, and I'm gonna swing it forward aggressively while I keep my feet on the floor. Boom. I wanna sit up until my elbows get to my knees. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, so I just did one set of this particular round of the world. I want you to do that three times. So you'll step back on each side in horse stance, step up, step out, and you'll do your 10 sit-ups, okay? So work that through three times total, what I just demonstrated, and I'll see you back here for a quick stretch before we dive in to the rest of our yellow stripe skills. Excellent job with the warm up, guys. It's good to get some good fundamental stance practice. It's one of those things that if you really nail it down early, man, it'll help you so much throughout the rest of your training time. Okay. Now, let's get a quick stretch in. So put your hands on your hips and hip circles. Other way. Arm circles backwards. And forward. Back and forth across your chest. Link your hands together, trunk twist. Hands back on your hips, head side to side. Looking left and right, up and down, good, spread your feet apart, lean forward, one hand on each foot, and just breathe for today, in through your nose, out through your mouth, nice, easy breath. Both hands over to your right foot, still breathing. Good, over to the left side. As you breathe out, sometimes you'll find you can sink into that stretch just a little bit more. Good. Hands in the middle. Scoot them out just another inch or so if you can. Hang down in the middle. Nice, good stretch. Good. Especially with this warmer weather, you go outside, play for a little bit. If you get a little uh, sweaty, it's a great time to stretch. Nice and warm. Good. Walk your feet in. Good. Hips side to side, or whack the tail as I like to say. Very nice. Excellent, guys. Good job with the warm and stretch. Grab a quick sip of water and let's dive into some forms. Mm. 
All right, when it comes to your yellow stripe, there are really two parts of that. There is your form, which is like a memorized pattern of techniques, and there is your whole sin soul grab techniques, or sometimes we call it self-defense. <coughs> Excuse me. So for today's video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of the forms in the beginner class. I'm gonna do it one time facing the camera, and I would just encourage you, watch, right? Use this as a little bit of a review to remember how the form works, and I'm gonna do it again facing away from the camera. When I'm facing this way, it should be much easier for you to follow along with me as we do the form. Now, if you are a white belt, a tiger or dragon transfer that hasn't earned your transfer belt yet, then your yellow stripe material is actually what we did in the warm up. It's becoming an expert at jumping jacks, push up, sit ups, and working on moving in front stance, moving in uh, back stance, and moving and stepping back into your horse stance. Okay? So uh, if that is you, then I want you guys also feel free to follow along with the sunshine belts and the tiger and dragon transfers that have earned their transfer belts as we do form one. Ninth gups and up, you guys will continue on to form two. Seventh or uh, orange belts and up, you guys will do form three. And then uh, the seventh gups, you guys will be doing Pianan Chodan. So I'm gonna just go straight through all those forms, follow along and have some fun with me, all right? So again, we're gonna start off with Sege Hyung Ilbu. This is form number one. Since I'm facing the camera again, just watch. I want you to kind of see how the form works. First move, step into Chumbi. So my feet are about shoulder width, my hands are in two fists. Now form one has low blocks, center punches, and front kicks coming up and down the middle. So first move, I'm gonna look to the side, step into front stance with low block. Step and punch, good. Same end of punch, loads up by the opposite ear. My front foot moves all the way around with a low block. Step and punch, good. Front foot moves back to the same direction I was facing originally. Now I'm gonna come forward with three front kicks. One, two, on this third one, we have our kia. After the kia, the back leg moves. Master Cosby always says, this is the hardest but most ninja move of the four. So back leg moves behind me. Now I'm gonna pivot on my feet with a low block. Step and punch, good. From here, my punching hand loads up by the opposite ear. Front foot moves all the way around and low block. Step and punch, good. Time for the bring and move towards the back. Front foot moves, three kicks again. Key up on the third. One, two, uh, three. After the key up, the back leg moves. Slide behind me, pivot and low block. Step and punch, load it up. Front foot moves, turn with my low block and step and punch. Bottle. Now, if my stances were pretty consistent, I should end up more or less where I started, which for me has worked out pretty well this time, right? Now, I'm gonna do that for him one more time, and I'm gonna face away from the camera. So this time I want you to follow along with me, all right? First move, we're gonna go to the left. So load up, look left, front stance, low block, beautiful. From here, stepping center punch, boom. So center punch is not as high as your head, right? So it's about Tommy high. The hand that just punched, loaded up by your opposite ear. Front foot moves all the way around and low block. Good, from here, step and punch again. Good, front foot is gonna move in the same direction that we were facing originally, boom. Coming forward, three front kicks. We'll key up on the third, ready? One, two, here's our third one, three. Ah! Back leg moves behind me. I'm just going to pivot on my feet and low block, beautiful. Step forward and punch. Punching hand, loads up by your opposite ear. 
Front foot moves all the way around and low block. Step and punch. Good. Bring it, move. Yeah, so our front foot move there. Good. Three kicks, guys. Three kicks. Ready? One. Two. Here's our third one. Three. Ah! Good. Back leg moves behind you. Pivot and low block. Step and punch, load it up, turn and low block, step and punch. Good, paro. Excellent, guys, excellent. That is Seike Hyung Ilbu, form number one. Now, if you are a Sunshine Belt, Tiger Dragon, Tiger Dragon transfer, or below, I want you to kind of rewind, go back on this video, and follow along with me on that forum four more times. Okay, if you want some additional details, you can look at the playlist, and Master Cosby, I think, is on there teaching this forum, and she does a version facing the camera and a version facing away as well. So go through this forum four more times. If you wanna watch these higher level forums, that's cool too, but go back and practice first, okay? Now, if you're a ninth up or higher, let's go ahead and we're gonna move on to form two. As before, I'm gonna do a one time facing the camera and one time facing away. So, chumbi, tengsu, sege hyang ibu, form number two. Now, when we do form number two, we're going to have high blocks, high punches, and side kicks. The pattern is the same as the first form. So, once you've learned that footwork, now we're just swapping out some moves. Okay, so watch me do it one time. First move, gonna look to the side. Loading at my hip this time, high block. Good, stepping, high punch. This time, that fist, same height as my chin or mouth. Punching hand loads at the opposite hip. Front foot turns, high block. Excellent. Notice how my wrist is flat. I don't want it broken backwards or forward. I want that super flat. Stepping, high punch. Beautiful. Front foot, bring and move. Coming forward, three side kicks. So I need that full pivot, point the tushy, you know it. And I'm gonna finish with my heel above my toes. I'm not super worried about how high I'm kicking. I'd rather have a good kick than a high kick that wasn't so great. So coming forward, three side kicks, we'll key up on the third one. One, two, three. Ah! Back leg moves behind us. I've loaded up my hip, turn, high block. Stepping, high punch. Punching hand, loads at your opposite hip, turn, high block. Stepping, high punch. Front foot, bring your move. Three side kicks again. One, two, and key up on the third one, three. Back leg moves behind, turn, high block. Stepping, high punch. Punching hand loads at the opposite hip, turn and high block. Stepping, high punch. Again, I should finish pretty close to where I started. So that was a demonstration of form two. Let's do it again, facing away from the camera so you can follow along. Here we go. Seike Hyang Yibu. First move, looking to the left. Low to the opposite hip, high block. Good. Stepping, high punch. Excellent. Punching hand, low to the opposite hip. Front foot moves all the way around. Turn with that high block. Stepping, high punch again. Awesome. Front foot moves, bring and move. Three side kicks, guys. Ready? One. Two, three, ah! from here, back leg moves behind you, turn and high block, stepping high punch, punching hand loads at the opposite hip, turn and high block, stepping high punch, front foot moves, 
Boom, right back where we came from. Three psychics again. Ready? One, two, here's our key up. Three. Back leg moves, turn and high block. Stepping high punch, load it up, turn and high block, step and punch. Butto. Excellent, guys. That was Sege Young Ibu. I don't know about you, getting a little sweat going here. Feels good. Now, let's move on. Uh, if you're a ninth up, I would recommend go back, follow along with me at least four more times on that form so you're in great shape. Otherwise, orange belts and up, let's keep it rolling. We're gonna move on to form number three. I'll demonstrate again. First move this time, it's a little different. Instead of stepping into a front stance, we're gonna actually shift into a back stance, okay? So when we do this first move, I'm looking to the left, pick up, side block, back stance. Step forward, center punch. Punching hand loads at the opposite hip, turn into back stance, side block. Step and punch, good. Front foot, bring and move. I'm coming forward with three roundhouse kicks. Ready, one, two, and key up on the third one, three. Back leg moves, turn into back stance, side block. Step and punch, punching hand, low to the opposite hip, turn and side block, step and punch. Bring your move towards the back, three round kicks. One, two, three. Back leg moves behind me, turn and side block. Step and punch, punching hand low to the opposite dip, turn and side block. Last technique, step and punch. Butt hole. Excellent. Good, we're gonna do it one more time. Let me fix something on my camera. Cool, I think it's all good. And we're gonna do Sig Young Sambu following along. So I'll face the other way. And Chumbi. Sig Young Sambu. Or number three. First move, looking left. Side block. Good. Step and punch. This is a front stance here. Punching hand loads at the opposite hip. Turn and side block. Boom. Step and punch. Bring and move. Three roundhouse kicks. Hana! Two! Set! Back leg moves, turn. Side block. Good. Step and punch. Load your opposite hip. Turn and side block. Step and punch. Good. Bring and move. Back where we came from originally. Three round kicks. Hana! Tool! Set! Back leg moves, turn. Side block again. Step and punch. Load. Turn and block. Step and punch. Bottle. Say Young Sabu. Go back. Review that a couple of times. I'm gonna grab a sip of water and then we'll come back for a pin on showdown, guys. Awesome work with the Sege Hyung guys. We are moving on to pin on showdown. This is the highest level form in the youth beginner class and it starts a sequence of five pin on forms. There's pin on showdown, pin on idan, pin on sandan, Piran Sadan, and Piran Odan. All right, this is a really, really good sequence with some pretty interesting historical uh, uh, significance here. So I would encourage you to do a little research on the Piran forms, and it's really quite fascinating, kind of the history behind them. So they're beautiful forms, and this is the first one that we work 
in our syllabus. So I'm gonna scoop back a little bit so I can demonstrate, kind of show it on for you, and then I'll do a facing away from the camera so we can follow along. So we'll go into Chumbi, Kiran Chodan. First move, I'm gonna to look to the side. I'm getting ready for a low block. This is starting off a lot like Sege Kyung Ilbu. From here, step and punch. Now, the next move is a double action move. That means there's gonna be two techniques for only one count. So far, this is the first time this will have happened. So I'm gonna load it up, I'm gonna turn. It's a low block in front stance. Then I'm pulling my front foot back into a really small back stance. It's called like a cat stance. As this foot pulls back, my lead hand comes back to my hip. My hips twist, boom, and it's a back fist, okay? The perfect spacing for my foot here is that if I drop my heel, there's about a fist distance in between my two feet. That would be just about right. Next count, I'm gonna drop my heel, step, and punch. Good. The next count is another double action. So I'm gonna look towards the starting point, load up, low block in front stance, pull my hand back to my hip, chop in front stance. Coming forward with three high blocks. So I'm loaded at my opposite hip. One, two, and of course I'm key up it on the third one. Ah! Turning with a low block. These next four moves, just like Sig Young Ilbu. Turn, low block, step and punch, load it up, turn and low block, step and punch. Good, not the bring it move. It's a low block in front stance. Back towards my starting point. Coming forward, three center punches. One, two, three. Four moves left, these are the hardest ones. We're gonna do our low blocks in back stance. Front hip, palm down, ear, turning into a back stance, low chop. Good. Front hip, ear. Now I'm not gonna step straight, and I'm not gonna step back this way. I'm actually gonna step at a 45 degree angle. Step 45 and low chop. Back hip, ear, turn, and low chop. Front hip, ear, I'm gonna step at a 45 degree angle again. Low chop, and bottom roll. Good, that's Piran Choda. Let's do it facing away from the camera so you can follow along with me. Ready? Chumbi! Piran Choda! First move, looking to the left, step into a front stance with a low block. Good. Step and punch. Awesome. Punching hand loads up. This is double action move number one. Front foot moves, turn, low block. Pull that front foot back and the front hand back to your hip. Twist those hips, back fist. Good, drop the heel, step and punch. Perfect. Another double action move, move it away, load it up, low block, pull back to your hip, chop. Both of those are front stance. Coming forward, three high blocks. One, two, three. Back leg moves, turning with a low block. Step and punch. Load it up. Turn with your low block. Step and punch. Good. Low block in front stance. Coming forward, three punches. One, two, three. Front hip, ear. Turn into back stance and low chop. Front hip, ear. Step 45, low chop. Back hip, ear. Turn, low chop. Front hip, ear. Step 45 and low chop. Bottle. That's peanut show done. If you're a seventh cup, go back on this video, go through that four more times. And again, review the playlist for seventh cup for some additional details there, but that is some good information on the forms.
okay? We'll take a quick break here, grab another sip of water if you need it. We'll come back and do a quick review of our wholesome soul grab techniques. Oh, oh, sorry guys. While you were finishing off your forms, I was giving myself a quick haircut. I think it worked out okay, not too bad. Get rid of these scissors real fast. Okay, okay, good. Great job with the forms. Now we are going to work on our whole sin soul techniques. All right, so I'm gonna ask Master Crosby to come right out here, and she's going to go through one through eight whole sin soul, kind of like half speed, just with some basic cueing. If you want some additional details on these, as always, you can look at the playlist for each rank, and it'll have a lot of good information. So this will be one through eight. If you are a white belt, tiger dragon transfer, or sunshine belt, you're, you'll be learning one and two. If you're a ninth cup, you'd be going up through four. Orange belts, learning five and six. And seventh cups, of course, you're responsible for one through eight. That's right, so um, for number one is the same side wrist grab. So that means he grabs here, as opposed to this is a cross hand wrist grab. So the first one is the same side wrist grab. I'm gonna open my hand and step with the same side foot of the hand, the hand that he's grabbing. So not like this here. So I'm gonna open, step, bring my hand to my shoulder, and chop. Now once you get good at that, remember that this needs to be fast. This shouldn't be slow, and they shouldn't have their hands still on you whenever you're doing the next step. So I'm here, open, step, shoulder, chop. That is number one. For number two, it's a cross hand wrist grab. So I'm gonna start the same way, I'm gonna open. Now, instead of stepping with the same side, I'm gonna step with the other one because I'm actually gonna end up doing a low block, which you guys know how to do. So I'm gonna open my hand, I'm gonna step with the opposite foot and low block, so I'm striking the wrist at the same time, I'm gonna chamber. Now when I chamber this hand, it's ready, and I'm gonna strike here. All right, so one more time. Open, step, and low block, chamber, strike. Right, and this is a palm up, I'm hitting right here. So that's number one and number two. Number three. Whew. Number three is a shoulder grab, same side shoulder grab. My hands are up. I'm gonna raise my hand up on the inside, so it's not on the outside of his arm, on the inside of his arm, and then I'm gonna drop my weight down. Now this is the important part. I need his elbow to be in line with the palm of my hand, right? So I need to wave it myself. Now once that happens, I can use my other hand to help pull up. This is a shoulder lock. So a lot of times students do this one. This isn't right, right? I need to make sure that my palm of my hand is in line with his elbow and then I pull up, and when he taps, I stop. So that's number three. Number four. Number four is a lapel grab. He can grab with either hand. My hands are up first. I'm gonna go over the top and grab the pinky side. Now, that's interesting. I could go over the top this way, but it's hard to grab the pinky. So I wanna go over the back of his hand, right? I'm gonna go over the top and grab the back of his hand on the pinky side and put my chicken wing down. That helps turn his hand so that his palm is up. Now, I'm gonna take my hand and my foot that are free, both of those, I'm gonna step forward into front stance and do an arm bar. I wanna stay up, look at my posture. I'm making sure there's no one else around as opposed to coming down or taking a knee, right? So he grabs again, up over the top, pinky side, Flip them over, I'm stepping through an arm bar, keeping my posture. Now, um, Master C, does this hurt? It doesn't hurt, so I shouldn't be killing him here. Now, I can control him here, he can't move, it can hurt when he starts to come up, but this shouldn't be painful, this is like a holding um, pattern for something else. Does that make sense? So we can continue on when you know more things. But so, stay up with your posture on number four, number five is a belt grab. So if their arm is bent, this is an arm bar, which means I need it to be straight. So 
Um, either hand is fine. You're going to grab with one hand, and I recommend that students step back to extend the arm. After they do that, they can use their palm of their hand or their arm to push up to hyperextend the elbow. The last thing that they should do is put their hips in, and then it'll hyperextend the elbow. Yeah, so that's number five. Number six. This one's tricky. My hands are up, and I'm going to do a quick peek. I'm going to turn as if I'm going to go give Master C a hug, right? I'm not going to hug him, but that's how I would turn. So I'm going to turn, and this is the important part. So I need to make sure this is secure. Now, if I expose the guns, please, his elbow is right here. I want to make sure that his elbow gets hyperextended. Now, I see a lot of younger students just like flailing about hoping to get this lock. There's a better way to do it. So I'm coming here and I want to get close in so that I can get the arm straight. Now, take a look at my footwork. My outside foot's going to step away and I'm going to take a knee so that I don't have to use strength. I'm going to use leverage to get him down. So I'm going to step with my outside foot and take a knee, right? So this leverage helps me get him down to the ground. That's the concept for that one. Um, let's see, six, number seven is if he grabs higher up, same thing. I'm going to step in this time instead, I'm going to go under here. Now, securing this can be a little bit trickier because you don't have anything up here, right? So you can use your hand if you'd like. One thing I tell students is I like to make sure their elbow is hyperextended. And I do that best like this. I don't do it best like this. You can do it either way. I do it best here, grab, and the footwork is the same. I'm going to step, and my inside knee takes the knee. Bam! Right? My posture is good. I can see around if there are other attackers, and I'm still controlling the person that put their hands on me. Number seven, last one, number eight. All right, so number eight, Master C has both of my hands um, at the wrist behind my back. So I need to get this hand that he doesn't have all scrunched up behind out before he either does scrunch it behind or takes me somewhere. So um, especially if someone is bigger, the person that's grabbing you, I like to step back to get an elbow first. So I need to get this hand close to my body and then shoot it straight out. Now, I'm going to turn, 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 turn. And when I turn this hand, I'm going to turn so that I grab him. So now I have his wrist. I turned against the thumb to get control of his wrist. I'm going to step through an armbar at the same time, and there's a sweep on this. So I'm going to sweep with this foot and armbar at the same time. Again, look at my posture. I'm up, making sure that I can see a second attacker if they're there. So that is one through eight. Awesome. So if you have someone at home that doesn't mind grabbing you, remember if they don't train, don't rip on their arm really hard, okay? Be gentle with them, work through these techniques. I'd recommend working through all of your holes and soul four times, guys, and then we'll come back here to finish out with a little game. All right, in our review classes, we've been working some staff skills. So I wanna go through uh, what I think is kind of one of the harder staff skills to learn, but once you learn it, it's one of the easiest to do. It, which is the single hand reverse figure eight, and we're gonna make a little bit of a game out of it. So in the previous videos, we've done a forward figure eight, which is kind of like if there was someone in front of you, you'd be like smacking down on their head while keeping the staff in one hand. When you do the reverse figure eight, you're changing directions. So if there was someone in front of me, I would be swinging up, kind of hitting them like under the chin, right? This would be the direction for the spin. So when you do this one, I always kind of think of it like I'm playing tennis or ping pong where there's a forehand and a backhand component, right? So with my forehand, I'm coming this way. Like I'm looking at my thumb, it's coming down and kind of scooping up. Ooh. So with the tip of the staff, it falls behind you, swings up. That same tip goes behind you and swings up, behind and up behind and up. Good. When you're doing this single hand reverse figure eight, 
Um, I haven't seen it a whole bunch, but I have seen students, boom, hit themselves with the tip of the staff. So I usually recommend to keep your free hand kind of up in front of you, just in case something does happen, you have your hand up to block it. Good, this is that single hand reverse figure eight. So really cool motion, you can work it on both sides. It's a really nice spin. Um, let's see, some other advice for the single hand reverse figure eight. Keep a, a loose grip, right? If you have that death grip on the staff, it's not going to travel nicely. You want it to kind of stay in line with your body as opposed to kind of being all out on the sides. Now here's the challenge. For me, Master Cosby's gonna have the little dodgeballs that we use in class and she's gonna toss them at me. And this is not easy. My job is to try to time my spin so that I'm able to hit the ball, okay? Um, if you don't have a bunch of these dodgeballs, if you had like, what's that? Socks. Socks, or I suppose if they're not throwing it too hard, you could use like rocks, but you would want to be outside where you're not, you know, beating people. Small stuffed animals. Small stuffed animals, maybe, I don't know, there's lots of things, be creative. So let's see how good I am at this one. So I've got my single hand reverse figure eight going. Oh, I missed one. Good. Oh, I missed again. Oh, three in a row. Come on, you got this. All right, she believes in me. Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> Even, oh, oh man. My practice round was so much better. It's not the throws. She's saying it's not her fault. Okay, like <laughs> 0 for 10 here. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Oh, I'm in a streak here. Oh, my forehand is better. I'm gonna try to stay on. Boom, the forehand, yeah. Not that one out of the tennis days. The backhand, good. And, oh, forehand again. Oh, I'm kind of in a groove. Oh, well, can't brag about it though. So cocky. There oh. you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna hit this one hard. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> All right, it's not the greatest showing. Come on. Oh, Two more. Two more. Oh, oh come last on. one, no pressure. Forehand. Bah! <laughs> Good. All right, so I think I've set the bar pretty low here. So I'm pretty sure that somebody out there can beat my, I'm gonna call it 10% accuracy. <laughs> with my single hand reverse figure eight. So I'll keep practicing, have some fun with it guys. Uh, the joke that we told, where do cows like to go on like a rainy day? You know they like to go to the movies, right? So good job guys, thanks for training with us today. Hope you have a good one and I'll see you again soon.